We move to next part of this course. Uh, in this part, uh, we will cover the host functionality on the STM32 with our libraries, and uh, we are starting directly with the first hands-on, so with the virtual COM port uh, on the CDC. So uh, with host, uh, you know, uh, there is the need. Uh, for the microcontroller now to handle the flow of the communication so is, uh, the microcontroller is initializing uh, the communication driving all the uh, transfers and uh, it's uh, its responsibility to manage all the transfer on the bus using the cube mx uh, there is again the standard offer of the classes and uh, for example for the cdc it's uh, very easy to start the project and uh, run the communication with uh, any kind of uh, virtual comport device uh, so what uh, will be a bit changed we will be see later on now uh, there is a dedicated process for the usb host which need to be called periodically either in uh, the main uh, in the while loop or the possibility is to run using the timer interrupt or probably most convenient way how to uh, drive this uh, process is to use artos uh, where uh, cubemx is uh, creating a dedicated uh, uh, task for a usb process uh, which is then calling it automatically uh, with the usb cdc uh, we will get uh, two main functions. First is the CDC transmit, uh, second one is CDC receive. So either for transmission or for uh, receiving, uh, in the case of the receive, uh, we uh, send the packet uh, in packet uh, to the device uh, that we are expecting some data and uh, in uh, basic configuration it's like uh, that uh, that uh, this request is uh, uh, repeated until we get valid data so uh, upon an accuracy uh, there is uh, another one until successful data which can uh, load the microcontroller a lot uh, but we will be able to see it later on also there are introduced uh, two types of callback uh, in the in, in class driver, so transmit callback and receive callback. Maybe it will be best to see it on the uh, flowchart. So now we are acting as a host. So if we want to transmit any kind of data to the device, we call the transmit function with the packet uh, to be transmit. And using the out endpoint, uh, we send to the device. When device successfully receive the packet, uh, send the acknowledge, and we receive transmit callback uh, to make uh, additional action after this step. When uh, the STM32 acting as a host uh, dedicated to receive any kind of data called the receive function, which activate the in endpoint. The number is not important, in our case it's number uh, endpoint number 1. And the packet is sent uh, to uh, the host, which triggers the receive callback. So now we can uh, move again to QPMX to create the project. We will use again uh, F446 Nucleo. So F446ZE. And the uh, initialization will be quite similar to the device so like usual with f4 we uh, it's mandatory to use high speed external for usb application now in the otg full speed we will activate host only and in the middleware we will use virtual comport 
Additionally, we will also uh, use uh, PC13 as a GPIO input for the button. And our LEDs, which are on PB0 in the button part, or we can use the find button. So for example, PB7 is the next LED we want to find and it's upstairs. And PB14 on the right bottom side, GPIO output for LED. And additionally, for the debug purposes, uh, we can activate the UART3, which is connected to the ST-Link virtual COM port. So we will be able to see what we sent or received. Unfortunately, uh, not correct uh, alternative pins are chosen here, so we need to move the UART pins to PD9 and PD8. Uh, we won't uh, use any more advanced uh, uh, type of transfers on the UART, so no DMA, no interrupt. Uh, for the case of simplicity, we will use standard uh, blocking transfers. So in the clock settings, uh, again, we have the 8 MHz with uh, high speed external. So 48 for USB. Verify the UART. OK. And uh, uh, our project is almost ready. Uh, just uh, one more thing we need to uh, remember when we are creating uh, host device is that uh, host is responsible for providing the power on VBus. So let's take a look into the nuclear board datasheet we are using. So we go to the electrical schematics and to USB. And we can see there is a USB power switch controlling the uh, switch for the power on VBus and on PG6 we need to define the pin and uh, keep, uh, keep it high in order to provide the VBus on the, bu on the uh, USB bus. So let's search for PG6. and set it as a GPIO output. So like that. And we can generate the project. Here uh, the application is a bit more greedy on the resources, so we will uh, increase the heap size and stack size and we can go for code generation. Open the project and we can uh, take a look at what was created for us. So in the main, in the while loop, we can see the uh, host uh, process, which is periodically calling the USB process, taking care about uh, the enumeration. And after that, uh, if we enumerate about the communication and also about the disconnection. But where we need to go first is the configuration. Here we also see two to-do points uh, from uh, QPMX. And this is the driver VBus. So here it's prepared space uh, for controlling of the VBus. 
as we see before it's uh, PG6 and on the high level we activate the charge pump so first here we need to put the uh, PG6 to reset state So like that, uh, this is the activating the charge pump, but for us is the main task to activate. So here we need to put the code for set. This will enable the charge pump on the start. Second important uh, part of the code for verification and also the file where we will use uh, where we will write the, the functionality later on is the USB host so here is the host in it for from the hardware in it uh, to registering the class and starting the process itself and in the user process uh, are the state of the connection itself so whether we are in mm, disconnect, uh, if we are in uh, application ready, here we are already able to communicate with the device. And uh, if the application start mean that we are connected, but not yet enumerated. So we will use this apply state a bit later on uh, for uh, differentiating if we are connected and we can communicate with our device. So now uh, we will create here a buffer which we will send uh, to the device and uh, also one buffer which uh, will be used uh, for uh, receiving the messages from the device. So two buffers. So first one for the receive, second one for transmit and we will type there some message. So we will uh, send to the device only hello and we will create 100 bytes buffer for the response for, for, from the device. For the second step we will uh, create uh, the function which we will periodically call and using the button we will decide whether to uh, send or uh, don't do any action. So it will be our user function. without any parameters so first we will create uh, one variable which will iterate us and uh, give us a bit more delay uh, to prevent the overloading uh, of the bus so we will be able to uh, see better what, uh, what message we sent and uh, the amount of messages we sent Now we need to check if the application is ready for communication. So we already see that uh, uh, we are able to communicate if uh, the apply state is the, in the state application ready, which is set here downstairs in the user process. So we can copy this line. So if the apply state is in the application ready 
we can uh, proceed uh, to uh, sending the message but uh, here it would be uh, one one by one so we will also wait for the button and introduce small delay using the uh, i variable so let's check the button so we pin gpio c and uh, gpio pin 13 we uh, want to see that is uh, pressed so it's set and uh, additionally we will use uh, some delay for the i variable So in this moment we want to uh, transmit uh, some uh, uh, kind of buffer which we already uh, created so we will call usbh for the host cdc and transmit again we will have we will pass the handler the tx buffer and uh, the size this will uh, set the transfer and we will put uh, the timing variable to zero if it's uh, not uh, higher than zero then we will increase okay the timer should be more sophisticated sophisticated but to make it simple so now once we uh, push the button message will be sent but we will uh, we want to also see some response from the device as a device we will use exactly the same configuration like we create uh, during the very first hands-on during the vcp device so we know that uh, this device is just echoing the incoming uh, communication so after we will uh, send uh, some message we want to also receive okay so uh, i show you once that uh, there are the callbacks but how to find them so it's uh, like usual for any kind of callbacks in uh, uh, all the STM32 class functionalities or peripheral functionalities so we will go to class so USB H CDC and here we will, be, we will search for a weak keyword so double underscore weak and what we find here is the CDC transmit callback which is called the one we uh, successfully uh, finish the transmission and the second callback is the receive one so after we receive so we will copy and use in our host configuration without the weak keyword so this will be now called uh, once we will receive uh, any kind of response so when we uh, transmit uh, any kind of buffer we want also to receive so USB H receive okay CDC also yes that's look better uh, here the handler Either we can use the original one or the, the one which is passed in the function. Our Rx buffer. And the size, we know that it's echoing, so it will be again the same size. And we will toggle light uh, to make it visible. 
also without the analyzer which I will still use uh, to show you exactly what is happening uh, on the bus so GPIOB we have three LEDs so let's use the PB13 and that's it so we send uh, one transfer and after the transfer we want to receive we are not able to receive uh, in during different time in the current configuration i will show you a bit later on on the uh, receive we will again only toggle a lot so for example pb0 So now our functions in USB host C are prepared, only uh, we need to uh, call them also. So we take our user function and pass it to the header files to USB host which is already included in the main C and put it also here. So now in the main C we are also able to call the user function. So we are good and let's compile the project. Hopefully there will be no error and we may switch to test of uh, the project. So host connection between two boards uh, also with the analyzer may be a little bit complicated but fine. Our project was compiled so let's load to the microcontroller. Okay, let's do it one more time. Probably some error was reached in the connection Okay, I probably know what is wrong. So if you also forget from the DFU, last DFU demo to erase the retail protection, please do. Otherwise you will see the error like me. So Okay, sorry for the problem. Now we are fine to test. So let's start the recording 
and run the test. So now we are connected. We can see there is some activity on the bus. We can press the button a few times and stop the communication. So here we are able to see uh, nine bytes were transferred on out, so from the host to the device, and uh, then it was returned. So our message is passed. What is uh, interested here is the uh, calculation of the overall usage. So I will also enable the NUX. So we can see there are no NUX in the communication. So let's try to measure between transfer 10 and 17. So we can see the load on the bus is uh, very, very low. Uh, there are no NUX at all, uh, but the reason is that uh, now the behavior of our host is not realistic because we are able to receive the message only after we uh, send some and only one transfer. So um, for the real host, you would expect that uh, you will be able to receive on this host uh, data anytime from the device. So here the load is low, but uh, uh, we need to make some changes to make the uh, behavior a bit more realistic. So going back to our code, leaving the debug, and we will modify our uh, host function. So uh, on start, we will create uh, one more uh, static variable so init receive because only once we will uh, we want to init the receiving messages so once the application is uh, ready if uh, we haven't done yet We will uh, call the uh, USB receive, which we have here in the callback. And so when we init the receive, we will uh, set to one. So like that. In this we, we can uh, leave in the exactly same shape and we make a bit more changes here in the callback. We don't want to re uh, initialize the receive upon the transmit, but uh, once we uh, receive some message. So now uh, after the application is started and uh, any type of device is connected. We start the receive, so we are able to receive any time. And, uh, and that is uh, fulfilled also by uh, calling again in the receive callback. So we are repeatedly enabling the receive. For the transmit callback, uh, that uh, show us that a message was passed. And, and also we should uh, follow this callback if we want to call multiple times the CDC transmit uh, to do not overwrite uh, the settings, but now we have the uh, LED only. So let's compile and load to the microcontroller. Okay, we need to send, change the handler here. And now we, now we are good to proceed to the second test. So again, I will start the analyzer and run the application. 
So now we can see that the load on the bus is much higher. I will press the button a few times and let's stop and uh, uh, let him proceed. What we uh, should be able to see right now is uh, that uh, the messages will look exactly the same like before in the first case, but uh, between the valid uh, data will be a lot of knocks which uh, are showing us that the host is repeatedly asking uh, for uh, the device for the data but uh, there are no data to be sent so the load is uh, load will be much higher with the not uh, useful data so in the in and out until now it's look exactly the same but if i disable the filtering of nux i am able to see here a lot of nux thousands of knocks. So uh, let's uh, f uh, sh calculate the load from uh, transfer 10 to f uh, 14. And already we can see that uh, 4.2 megabits per second. So in the uh, overall, we can see that uh, the load of the bus is uh, <laughs> below uh, one percent, much much more below. But uh, uh, the bandwidth for the NAX is uh, quite occupied. So there is a lot of uh, um, transfers which are not uh, carrying any useful data in the end. So the, uh, uh, not only the uh, load on the bus is high, but also the number of interrupts inside of the microcontroller. Because uh, each of the NAC needs to be handled and uh, again retransmit. So I will use a bit different uh, view so to do not uh, stack the view so we will be able to see the time between the knocks so we see that there is a knock every 12 microseconds so every 12 microsecond need to be uh, in an interrupt from from the USB which need to be handled by the USB core itself which is again increasing the load uh, of the microcontroller for the USB task or for the USB handling. And uh, if uh, the mm, data bandwidth we need is not so high, this is uh, not really convenient. So in the last part of this hands-on, I will show you how to um, decrease the load of the microcontroller, so the NAC mes uh, the in request, which may be followed by a NAC from the device, will, will be sent only once per uh, chosen time. So the load will be decreased, but uh, also the performance uh, and the bandwidth for the application will be decreased by that. So it's a trade-off between the performance you want to dedicate to USB host functionality and uh, uh, the bandwidth you need. So let's go back to our code. And we will need to make some uh, changes in the library file. So for this purpose, we need to go into the driver how driver source and to the ACD where are handled the interrupt from the uh, USB and for us is in important the ACD AC in RQ handler so for the in uh, tran uh, transfers in direction so we can uh, see here on the right side uh, in okay here we are here are handled the various flags from the peripheral 
Uh, if you want to go deeper with this problematic, uh, reference manual is the right place for you. For, for us is important the one handling the NUX. Okay, so here we see. So, uh, what is uh, the crucial place here is uh, the is this one. So for the interrupts, we are not using the interrupt transfer, but here is that if uh, the NAC is received from the control or from the bulk type of endpoint, we will reactivate the channel. So what we uh, will do is that in this state uh, we will use it only for the control to do not violate uh, the enumeration and uh, for the bulk we will rewrite so I will use this construction so what we need to do in case of bulk is uh, to unmask the halt, halt the channel and flush the FIFO so first Hull ACD and uh, we will unmask uh, unmask the halt interrupt with our channel number after that we will halt the channel So uh, where to get the handler? It's from the instance A C D instance. Again, we will use the channel number which we want to halt. And at the end, we also need to flush the FIFO because already some other in request may be in the FIFO. So. Uh, we would be able to see more in request even uh, we would uh, here disable uh, the repetition so tx54 again the instance and channel number So using these steps, uh, we uh, disabled uh, the automatic uh, retransmission of the NAX, but uh, now we also need uh, to use some different mechanism to control uh, the number of in requests we want to send. Uh, so for this, uh, we will a bit rewrite uh, the CDC process. So we will go again back to middleware, but first we can try that uh, we made the change correctly. Obviously not. So what I type wrongly. Else if. Okay, so let's go to the middleware, host library and to the class and uh, we now want to change bit uh, the header file. So down here uh, there is uh, the CDC process so we will need uh, one more uh, variable here that will call the take the last uh, time 
of the um, uh, Sysstick timer when we call the in the request. Now we have the information and in the uh, CDC source file, we will modify the process reception. So on start, we will add uh, also the information about uh, the current uh, tick, so about the SysTick. And here in the URB done, we want to add the alternative that if else if we are in uh, URB status idle, So nothing is uh, uh, the peripheral now is in the idle state, so it's uh, uh, waiting for some next instruction. So in this point, uh, we will evaluate the time we will uh, last send the in the request, and if it's uh, above some defined uh, value, we will uh, go again to here to the. CDC receive data state, which called the bark receive data, so uh, stand for the same functionality like uh, uh, USB CDC uh, receive. So first we get the information from the tick. I'll get tick. And if uh, so, here is the current time, and from that we want to uh, get the last tick uh, we uh, have saved in the handler. So CDC handle and the variable we added. And if this is uh, bigger than uh, some defined uh, amount of time, so uh, we can write either directly or using the defined. So uh, here I will put one. So this is uh, showing us the time in millisecond, which will be between two in the request for us. So what do we want to do? Uh, first, you want to uh, move uh, the uh, last tick. So we will put to this variable the current tick. So uh, next time uh, also it will be by one millisecond, and uh, we will change the state. On the data RX to CDC receive data to this one, so next time it will be calling called in the process. Uh, bulk receive data will be uh, called. So that's are the changes we need to do, and we can again go to the debug and test the project. So let's start the recording and run the application. 
so we can see there is again some load uh, not so high as before so let's try to press the button a few times to send some data and stop recording So here we see again the in uh, transfers out transfer from uh, one to second uh, from the host to the device, and uh, we can calculate the load. So 10, 20 in the transfers. We can see that uh, now the percentage uh, idle uh, is uh, quite reasonable and also let's take a look on the time between two knocks. And we can see that there is uh, approximately one millisecond between two knocks. So using this approach and changes in the library we are able to control the uh, virtual com port uh, host application timing and uh, change more according to our need also with the respect to some reasonable load of our application.